Welcome to ESPN College Football Primetime, presented by Dr. Pepper. They call it Farmageddon. K-State and Iowa State meeting for the 106th consecutive year. Tonight in Ames, the 20th ranked Wildcats enter hostile territory to face the Cyclones. We're looking to stop a two game losing streak. The biggest home crowd of the year will be behind them. What a crazy Saturday in the Big 12. This is the final game of the day. K-State, TCU, Oklahoma State still unbeaten, but as everybody knows, this is anybody's league this year. Hi again, everybody. Welcome to Ames. Alongside my partner, Rocky Boyman, I'm Clay Mathic. Don Davenport will join us shortly. Number 20, Kansas State, has racked up close to 1,000 yards of offense the last two weeks, and their quarterback, Adrian Martinez, is seeing his career enjoy a renaissance. He's playing the best football of his career because he's finally just playing free and cutting it loose out there, and the results really just speak for themselves, especially the last two weeks. You see the numbers. Clay, really all the way up until that Tulane game was playing too conservative. Coach Kleiman said, look, you got to just cut that thing loose a little bit, and he's done it. An absolutely dynamic runner. I mean, he can grind you out, but he can hit you for the big play. Clay, I think he looks faster on film than I've seen him in a couple years, and I think it's because he is just finally just going out there and playing and being that great natural athlete that he is. Now, if you pay too much attention to him, you've got – Deuce Vaughn to worry about. Yeah, you also got to worry about the number one rusher in the Big 12, and that's Deuce Vaughn. He's only five foot five, but he's like trying to catch a house fly out there. So slippery, a tough running back. Really, really a tough task to hear for Iowa State tonight. So Kansas State is the number one rushing offense in the Big 12. Iowa State, on the other hand, a terrific defense. The best in the league, especially stopping the run. That's where this game could be decided tonight. Yeah, how about that one versus one, strength versus strength here tonight? And Iowa State's defense has really been keeping them in these games while their offense has struggled a little bit out there. And it's a lot that has to do with their linebacker play, especially that man right there. Orion Vance. He's all over the field. He's a six-year guy. He came back to this program because it meant so much to him. But again, those linebackers got to be great tonight against this rushing attack for Kansas State, number one in the Big 12. Well, the Cyclones defense has been doing its part. The offense has been pedestrian the last couple of weeks. Now, they do have the nation's leading pass catcher, Xavier Hutchinson. He's going to try and help this offense get back on track and get Iowa State back in the win column. A good one tonight in the Big 12. Kickoff coming up next. Pacifico is our own path. In life, anchors up. Tonight, over 60,000 fans in Ames. Biggest crowd ever to watch this one in this series. Welcome back to the Big 12 on ESPN. These two have been meeting every year since 1917. Slight edge to the Cyclones, who have won two straight in the series. Talked about that Iowa State running game a little bit that needs a spark. Well, we understand there's some good news. For more on that, let's go down to Don Davenport. Yeah, Clay, good news for an Iowa State offense that is averaging just 112 yards a game on the ground, 111 in the country. Head coach Matt Campbell knows they got to get the run game going tonight to help out their quarterback, Hunter Deckers, take some pressure off of him. And the good news is they will have starting running back Jirel Brock back in the lineup. He injured his ankle after one carry last week. They struggled without him, but coach tells me he does not expect him to be limited at all tonight, despite his limited and practice reps this week. I watched him in warm-ups. The ankle doesn't look heavily taped. He was cut and clean, planning that foot like usual. Guys even busted out some dance moves on that injured ankle. Playing Rocky, that's big news for this offense. They struggled without it. No doubt about it. And his head coach, Matt Campbell, in his seventh year, turns 43 next month. Talked to him this week, Rocky, and he said the attitude is good. The morale is high despite the losing streak. Morale is good, but I got the sense talking with them that they're a little bit angry right now. They've been close the last couple weeks. They really want to come out and play their football game tonight and get after Kansas State. Chris Kleiman in his fourth year, 55 years old, a Waterloo, Iowa native, played and coached at Northern Iowa before winning those four FCS titles at North Dakota State, trying to start 3-0 in conference play for the second time in three years at K-State. And we are underway and Iowa State is going to start with the football as Ty Zentner sends it through the end zone. 
Well, Hunter Deckers, the left-handed quarterback, spent a couple of years behind the winningest quarterback in Iowa State history, Brock Purdy. Y you can tell that he's going through maybe some growing pains right now. A little bit, yeah. First year as, a, as the starter, but I think this is a big game for Hunter Deckers. Last couple weeks in conference play, I, I think he hasn't played as well as a lot of Iowa State fans would hope and expect him to play. He's got to have a big one tonight. So Jirel Brock is done, reported. In the lineup tonight, and he'll get the first touch. And he'll take it on the left side and gets to the 30. And then that injured right ankle. We'll be keeping a close eye on that tonight. Look pretty good. And you can tell right away, Clay, they want to establish that run game. The last two weeks, just 92 rush yards combined. They need that to stay two-dimensional out there. Second down and five. Empty backfield. Decker's out of the gun. He'll sling it, and it's through the hands of the receiver, incomplete. And there's Xavier Hutchinson in his hands on it, but can't haul it in, so it's third down. Yeah, that's a rare miss by Xavier Hutchinson. Usually very sure-handed out there. Get him on the quick slant. You'll see him on that. You'll see a lot of shallow crossers. Any way and every way they can get number eight the ball. That's what they got to do. K-State's third down defense, number two in the Big 12. Jalen Knoll goes in motion. Deckers has time, sets, throws, and it is caught. Dimitri Stanley gets it out to the 39-yard line, a nine-yard pickup, and a first down for the Cyclones. And what a nice confidence builder for Hunter Deckers. That's a great play, fitting that ball into a real tight window. The line protection was really good, and he just lets that thing rip. He can, he can zip that football, come with that left-handed delivery. Injury time out on the field, Khalid Duke, the reigning Big 12 Defensive Player of the Week. Unable to get up following that catch by Stanley. Yeah, Khalid Duke, three sacks last week. That's pretty good. Well, no doubt that Kansas State knows how to get to the quarterback. And Udike Uzama and Duke each had three sacks last week against <laughs> Texas Tech. Donovan Smith was on his back a lot. First time in Kansas State history, two guys with three sacks each in one game. Yeah, both 91 and 29 were bringing it. And, and for Duke, he was a guy the first couple weeks of the year, he's, he had to play some Sam linebacker, was dropping into coverage a lot, and finally allowed him to do what he does best, and that's get after the passer. He's getting some help getting off, but he's making his way mostly under his own power to the sideline. Remember, he did not go through full camp. He was still recovering from an ACL injury. But since getting back to health, he has been really good. Yeah, hopefully for K-State, he's able to come back in this football game because they need him. They've got to get after the quarterback. So the Cyclones pick up their first first down. First and 10 from the 39. Deckers will sling it out to the flat. Incomplete intended for Eli Sanders. One of the running backs we'll see tonight behind Jirel Brock. It's incomplete second and 10. Yeah, Eli Sanders, he, he's got some elite traits to him. He's a guy they like to get involved in this offense. Not a lot of experience. And the one thing for Iowa State you'd like to see tonight is for them to exploit the middle of the field. A lot of their offense is to the perimeter. A lot of shallow crossing routes. Try to hit something between the hashes here tonight. They need some big plays. Deion Silas checks in at running back. Deckers will shoot it out to Jalen Knoll. And he'll get it across the 45-yard line before Kobe Savage makes the stop. It's a gain of six. They'll bring up third down and manageable here for the Cyclones in their opening series. Yeah, I think Jalen Knoll can be that guy that can complement Xavier Hutchinson. Hutchinson, number eight, he gets all the attention. But I think 13 has some game-breaking ability in him, in him himself. Noel had the best game of his career a couple of weeks ago against Baylor. Seven catches for 120 yards. K-State showing blitz. Third down and four. Deckers on the slant. Incomplete. Again intended for Stanley. Got a hand on it, and that's it. The Colorado transfer can't haul it in, so it's fourth down, and the Cyclones will have to punt. And not a great throw, and Kansas State brought six on that play. They want to make Hunter Deckers uncomfortable back there, and they forced the punt. So for an offense that needs to have a good night, not a great start. Tyler Perkins 
On to punt, Phillip Brooks. Dangerous return man will call for the fair catch. And K-State will have their first series. And this offense, what can it do for an encore? And the last couple of games have been so entertaining, led by Adrian Martinez. Of course, 23-year-old Nebraska transfer. Two weeks ago, Chris Kleiman said, hey, we need more from you, man. And boy, has he delivered. <laughs> That's right. He's played a ton of football. Everyone knows the story about what happened at Nebraska. You know, set a lot of records and yardage and 300-yard games, 200-yard games, but also in interceptions. Had 30 of them. And I think that's something that's kind of weighed on his mind. It's really been Chris Kleiman that's told him, look, young man, you're a great player, a great athlete. Go out there and just let it rip. First kick carry for Deuce Vaughn. And he's going to be stopped just shy of the 20-yard line. Leading rusher in the Big 12. And as good as Adrian Martinez has been the last couple of weeks, Vaughn is still the pulse of this offense. It, it, it's amazing. It's like he's like the less talked about running back on this team because of a Martinez. But I'll tell you what, for Iowa State defensively, they got to do a great job with gap integrity. you got to stay in those gaps because Deuce, he'll just kind of hang in there. He'll bounce and he'll bounce right back. If you're not there, it's gone. Second down and five. Play fake, Martinez to throw for the first time, and he throws it to an empty wing. Nobody out there on that side of the field. Malik Knowles was about five or six yards down the field behind that pass. Yeah, not sure. It looked like he might have expected Knowles there to stop and come back to that ball. But here we go, and this is where A.J. Martinez is so dangerous. You can have the perfect call on the back end, and he can still find a little crease. they got to keep him in that net tonight. Kansas State last in the Big 12 on third down. 32%. Martinez heated up. Sheds a hit. Got it downfield, and it's caught by Brooks. Shakes loose. He could go. Phillip Brooks. Goodbye touchdown. The five foot seven veteran playmaker goes 81 yards for the score. <laughs> the magician. What an incredible play by Martinez. Staying alive. And the blitz came as a delayed blitz by Colby Reeder, and he shakes it off. You can see his strength, and then plants the back foot, throws it to big number eight. What an incredible play to start this game. Iowa State's defense had him dead to rights. They've done so good this year, Clay, not giving up the big play. They give up a big one early. And the extra point by Chris Tennant is good. Phillip Brooks with his second touchdown of the year. And again, Adrian Martinez doing amazing things. Doing, doing a great job there. He hangs in the pocket, keeps the eyes downfield, evades the rush, then launches that thing for the big play. Kansas State up 7-0. Adrian Martinez doing a Houdini act. It looked like he was going to be sacked. He ends up throwing the longest pass of his career for a touchdown, 81 yards to Phillip Brooks. A three-play, 86-yard drive in just 54 seconds. We talked a lot about his running ability. You said, hey, I can throw the ball a little bit, too. Wow, this one this. doesn't get to the end zone. Miles Purchase has to return it. He didn't expect that to happen. And now it's going to be a long field for Iowa State. And special teams, we know how they have been plaguing Iowa State in the last couple of games. Yeah, you usually don't see that out of a well-coached Matt Campbell team, but last week they had a bunch of them. And of course, you know, that, that, that was just a, the interception last week. Hunter Decker's back in his own end zone here, but, you know, Noel does something he normally doesn't do, right? Fumble a punt. And, then they had, the, of course, three missed field goals. Had a bad snap on an extra point. It's, it's not been good and doesn't start off well tonight. So now Hunter Deckers, who looked a little uncomfortable on his opening series and really has looked uncomfortable the last couple of games. Go back to work on offense. He'll hand off to Jirel Brock. Trying to find some operating room on the right side. Nothing there. Daniel Green, the physical middle linebacker, makes the stop for K-State. Yeah, Daniel Green is a really good linebacker for Kansas State. I think he's a lot better player than he was last year. Also, Austin Moore is another big-time linebacker at the will position. Those two guys are getting her done.
Brock again in the backfield to the right of Deckers. And it is Brock. Takes a hit. It's to the 10-yard line, and that's about it. A gain of three. So here we go. Third down and long after that sincere Mason tackle. And Iowa State, as we know, really struggled running last week. 30 carries, 26 yards against Kansas. Trying to find some traction here in the early going tonight. Let's see if Deckers can settle in and make a big completion here. Somebody jumps. Maybe Iowa State drew K-State offside. Offside. Number 92, defense, entering the zone and making contact. Five-yard penalty, first down. Kevin Boitman, our official tonight. And it was Eli Huggins, the super senior. Got his bell rung last Action week. Good to see him. To play is third down after penalty. Okay, this Three week back out down. on the field. And yeah, they need him. He does a really good job. And that interior defensive line taking away those A gaps. Now a much more manageable third and two. They throw it. Caught by Hutchinson. Trying to beat Josh Hayes. Hayes finally able to get him down, but Iowa State is in plus territory for the first time today. And what a confidence builder for Hunter Decker's first three throws of the game. Looked unsettled, but throws a dart right in between two white jerseys. Hits his best receiver in stride. And they finally get a big play on offense. They've so desperately needed these last couple weeks. Another man down for K-State. This time it's Felix and Yudike Uzama. The best pass rusher. They've already had Khalid Duke shaken up tonight. And Duke's not been back in the game. And now if they lose their other best pass rusher, that's not good. Big 12 Defensive Lineman of the Year last year, and Yudike Uzama. Had 11 sacks last year. Already has half that many this season. Another guy that the Wildcats can't afford to be without. He's also got his eight career force fumbles. So he's a definitely an impact player. So Xavier Hutchinson, who had a, a rare drop earlier, I guess you can call it a drop on that first series, now with his 50th catch on the year. He had 13 last week at Kansas. You know, we knew that K-State probably would concede a lot of underneath routes to Xavier Hutchinson because they kind of told us that this week. It was the deeper stuff, the long stuff, that they wanted to be wary of. Yeah, they definitely wanted to stay on top of him. But that's the thing about Xavier Hutchinson is, is his after-the-catch ability. Game-breaking, has some speed there, trying to fight, scratch, claw. You know, he's a guy you can't understand. You look at these draft boards. I know you're into big, big mock draft guy, right? right? You don't see his name a lot, and I frankly don't understand it. So Iowa State, which is last in the Big 12 in explosive plays, gets 38 yards on that completion to Hutchinson. Now Decker's pumping. And on first down, he's going to go deep downfield again to the tight end, Hanukkah. Deshaun Hanukkah, the Topeka, Kansas native, gets it to the 21. It's a great play design by the OC, Tom Manning. His little pump fake out there, Xavier Hutchinson. So, of course, the whole defense rushes up, and then the seven route right behind the cornerback. And now Brock on the run straight up the middle. And he'll get a couple, but how about that? Back-to-back -back explosive plays for this Iowa State offense. That's, that's big. This offense has sputtered the last couple weeks. And you see Brock coming out of the game. They, they still need to get that run game going, though. Jared Russ, former walk-on. Their fullback, he's in the game. As Deion Silas shuffles to the right of Deckers. Who's Hunter Deckers in the pocket. The slide up, throws, it's deflected and nearly completed. <laughs> Couple of Cyclones got their hands on it. Stanley and Silas, but it's incomplete third down. Even without their best pass rushers in the game, they're drawing up some blitzes, trying to bring some heat. 
Oh, almost tipped up and caught. Deion Silas, who got 50 snaps last week after Brock got hurt, almost had a fluke catch. And DK Uzama back in the game, lineman top of your screen there. Line one. Decker is floating one to Hutchinson, just off his fingertips, incomplete. Uh, Xavier Hutchinson. Nearly had a six-touchdown grab of the year just a little bit too long. And now Jace Gilbert will come on. Just a little bit out of his reach. It's one that Hutchinson, I'm sure, expects out of himself to make. Tough one, but here we go. Kicker missed three field goals last week. He said he's not panicking. Matt Campbell still has trust in him. He'll set up here from 35 yards out. And a big cheer from the crowd here at Jack Trice Stadium. Fans are still behind that young man, too, from Marlowe, Oklahoma. And Iowa State's on the board. ESPN College Football is presented by delicious ice-cold Dr. Pepper, the one fans deserve. Well, after a rough week, in Lawrence, Jace Gilbert hits a 35-yard field goal to get Iowa State on the board at 7-3 K-State. It was an eight-play, 74-yard drive. Iowa State still struggling a little bit in the red zone, but I'm sure Matt Campbell's happy to see Gilbert get the monkey off his back. Absolutely. After last week, showed the mental toughness. It's good to see. So they did tell us this week that they were considering taking the kickoff chores off Gilbert's plate. And that is indeed the case. Keegan Shackford, redshirt freshman out of Virginia, is going to kick off here for Iowa State. Malik Knowles, the All-American kick returner, back deep for the Wildcats. Low line drive kick, and it'll be a touchback. Wildcats going to start at the 25 as we go down to Don. Well, guys, Jace Gilbert got a lot of support after a rough game last week. He actually got a text from former Iowa State quarterback Brock Purdy on Sunday after his struggles. And here's a part of that text. He wrote, I remember I threw three interceptions in the final three minutes of the Oklahoma State game my sophomore year. I felt like I let our entire university down, took a lot of heat, but I realized that God's love for me never changes, and I started playing in freedom. Jace Gilbert spoke to some high school athletes this week, guys. He shared that message. Play in freedom. Don't be timid. There were a lot of people rooting for him this week, no doubt about it. Thanks, Don. Adrian Martinez. Another strike to Phillip Brooks, who had the touchdown on the opening series. That's another big gain, a play of 21. And, and this is beautiful, because you, you get the feeling Iowa State's thinking, hey, we got to stop the run, got to stop the run. So what's A.J. Martinez do? Well, let's light him up a little bit in the pass game. Loosen that thing up. And the more they can do that, the more it's going to open up things for the run game later. Now they do run it here with Vaughn, and he runs into a brick wall, and there's the aforementioned Orion Vance. Yeah, how about last week? Martinez ran on the first two plays against Texas Tech, and it resulted in 75 yards worth of offense and a touchdown. This week, they open it up through the air, and they're having early success. Big plays. I mean, it's what every offense wants. You get those big plays, it's just a dagger into the heart of the defense. And number nine doing tonight through the air. Here's a design quarterback run for Martinez, the first of the night. MJ Anderson ready for him. The transfer from Minnesota. It's a great job by MJ Anderson fighting off the block, coming lateral downhill and stopping that run before it can get started. So third down and long of this Iowa State defense under John Haycock. Fired up, trying to get off the field. This is a defense that really stymied Kansas last week held him to 213 yards of offense. Iowa State's showing blitz up in those A-gaps. Cyclones bring the pressure. Martinez gets rid of it, and it's almost intercepted. Miles Purchase was in the vicinity. Lands incomplete. K-State will have to kick. Yeah, it looked like that ball just sailed on Martinez a little bit. Iowa State 
lined up in those A gaps. They chose the blitz, brought a little bit of pressure. Felt it a little bit. Good job hanging in that pocket. He had time to throw. The thing just sailed on him. Ty Zentner, the veteran punter from Topeka, all Big 12 last year, ready to punt for the first time. Jalen Knoll, what a muffed punt last week for Iowa State, calling for the fair catch. There's a penalty flag down. Bounces inside the five-yard line, but this could be running into the kicker or maybe roughing the kicker. And if this is a penalty against Iowa State, the miscues on special teams continue to rear it. The ugly head. And you usually just don't see this out of well-coached teams. Special teams miscues. Two of them on that play. Now Kevin Boyntman is going over in front of the uh, K-State bench to talk to Chris Kleiman. And uh, this will be against Iowa State. Running into the kicker on the defense. The penalty is declined. First down, Iowa State. Yeah, Chris Kleiman declines it. He wants the long field for the clones. Yeah, and, and, and that ball bounce is going to punch him back here a little bit. Right now, K-State up 7-3 to three here in Ames. Welcome back to Ames, Iowa, Kansas State leading this one 7-3. Defense back on the field, but it looks like for now they are going to be without linebacker Khalid Duke. Big loss for them. I watched him during the last possession. He's run up and down the sideline, limping heavily on that right ankle, does not have his helmet, and is not getting any treatment for tra from trainers now either. All right, Don, thank you very much. Felix and Yudike Uzama is back out on the field. The other... Wildcat who was shaken up on that last series. Jirel Brock gets a little breathing room for this Iowa State offense. He'll pick up about four. Cheatham in on the tackle second down. I still think they've got to be patient with this run game and try to get some consistency out of it. I think Jirel Brock, certainly one healthy, is a guy that can kind of chip away, chip away, and really lean on this defense. As Brees Hall's back up the last few years, of course, Ball a two-time All-American. And it is Brock bouncing to the outside. He's going to be tripped up by Josh Hayes, the transfer from Virginia, who started his career at North Dakota State with Kleiman and Klanderman. Going to be third and short. I just wonder if, if Brock is healthy. Is that one he can break? Yeah, you, you know, he's able to play, but you would think, yeah, that's you know, one. it's probably a little tender yet. They fake the handoff to Brock. And it's going to be caught for a first down. Xavier Hutchinson will move the chains. It's a four-yard game. Nice throw there by Deckers. Nice long throw just to pick up a few yards for the first down. Xavier Hutchinson reaching up and hauling that thing in. Deckers has a 69% completion rate this season. That's second best in the Big 12. Completed a career-high 30 passes last week for 287 and a touchdown. This is Jalen Knoll. And not much there. Quickly I'll wrapped up. Tell you what, Clay, this Kansas State defense is flying around, especially the back end. We saw Josh Hayes right there earlier in 21. Drake Cheatham really doing a good job, not allowing any yards after the catch. Like Iowa State, they run that 3-3-5 three, three, yep. stack. And They've got the players with the speed to make it work right. Exactly. It's that scheme that allows these guys just to sit back and play fast. Deckers. Noel again, and he's got enough for the first down. Another short pass. Deckers is right on the money, and that's going to move the chains again. If it's working, keep going to it. And they really do a good job exploiting the perimeters of the, of the field. Iowa State trying to draw K-State off. <laughs> Almost worked. Well, Decker's checking the play at the line of scrimmage. Silas in the backfield. This one is caught by Sean Shaw. 
And that's going to be about a yard shy of the first down marker. Sean Shaw always plays well against Kansas State. Two of his eight touchdowns in his career against the Wildcats. Great frame at six foot six. Especially on his one steps. He sees the defensive back out there giving a big cushion. Boom, that ball zipped out there. A lot of new faces on this Iowa State offense as far as the main contributors go. Decker's deep handoff. Silas, nice move to the outside. He's got the first down and more out close to midfield. Cheatham will usher him out. It's another big play for this Iowa State offense, a gain of a dozen. And you wonder if you start seeing a little bit more of Silas, because there was some burst right there, right? As it's not seeing the extra gear right now out of Brock, so you bring in Silas, who's a little bit smaller, but you can see the speed finally giving a little game-breaking ability there out of the backfield. Well, after Brock got hurt last week, Silas got the lion's share of the carries. He came out of camp as the fourth-string yeah. running back. Good job by him of paying attention, staying engaged in that playbook. When his chance is coming, he's doing well. Decker's pressure, and he is going to go down, sacked behind the 45-yard line by Brendan Mott and Nick Allen, the reserve middle linebacker. That's a good job with a little line stunt there. You see Allen coming on the twist game. It frees up for him. He comes in and brings Decker down. And we talked to Tom Manning, the offensive coordinator for Iowa State this week. He said, yeah, the O-line kind of took a step back last week. Deckers was sacked five times. That's the first time he ends up on his back tonight. Here's Hutchinson. Always great after the catch. Xavier Hutchinson inside the 30. There's a marker down late. And another big play for Iowa State. 27 yards. We'll see if this is going to hold up or if this is coming back. Be holding. I haven't seen it yet. Holding. Yeah. Number 14 on the offense. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. After enforcement, it's first down. So it was on the run after the catch, and it was Dimitri Stanley, the guilty party. So it's at the spot of the foul. Yeah, blocking downfield those wide receivers. But I love that play design there. They've got Jake Remsburg, the right tackle, and Jared Russ, the fullback, out into space. That's Xavier Hutchinson work. It was just right at the end of the play. So instead of the 31, they mark it at the 41. Still a first down for Iowa State. Tenth play of the drive coming up. Deckers pumps. Now looking left. He'll fling it. Caught by Stanley. Trying to get out of a tackle. Picks up nine. That was a good job by Deckers going through his progressions. He wanted to throw to the bottom of the field. It wasn't there, so then comes back up to the top to stand. Starting to see some rhythm here in this Iowa State offense. Tom Manning, the offensive coordinator in his sixth year. He was a college teammate of Matt Campbell's at Mount Union. And, of course, was his offensive coordinator at Toledo for many years. Brock stood up. Not going to make the line to gain. That's Cody Stuffelbean. Converted tight end. Now a pretty good defensive end. And it'll be third and about two. Great job by Stuffelbean getting off that block. Coming in and making a big play. This is where they've struggled, right? Kind of around that red zone area. Yeah. They've had some big plays, but haven't been able to capitalize and put points on the board. And the red zone, Iowa State has scored on just 77% of their chances, last in the Big 12. They still got a few yards to go to get into the red zone officially. Deckers uncorks, and that's going to be a first down catch for Hutchinson. Just ahead of the marker. And they'll be able to keep the drive alive. You know, and you and I were watching 
the film from last week. Seemed like a couple of times last week the receivers run a little short of the sticks. This time Hutchinson, a good job, gets one yard behind it. And then good ball placement there by Deckers, putting a load to the outside where only the receiver can get it. Fourth catch for Hutchinson, already 69 yards. Brock him a pistol. And he'll get the deep handoff. Jirel Brock. That just one carry last week. And, you know, after he left the game, no doubt about it, that Iowa State running game just dried up. Yeah. Seven straight completions for Deckers. And they're going to take this one to the second quarter. I'm not going to snap it again. So, low scoring first quarter. That's no surprise. After 15 minutes in the 106th edition of Farmageddon. It's going to be a good night here in Ames. Iowa State and K-State blocking horns. Back in a moment. Number 20, K-State leading Iowa State 7-3. ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Dr. Pepper. Cyclones dominating time of possession in that first quarter, but only three points to show for it so far. And the number three rushing offense in the country getting it done through the air. That's why they have the lead. Deckers has it batted down incomplete. It'll be third down. Clay, I want to go back to your last point there. Yeah, keeping the time of possession. That's keeping Adrian Martinez and Deuce Vaughn on the sideline. That's the game plan. It's working out perfectly, but you got to get some points on the board as well. Keep the ball as long as you want, but if you're not scoring, it's doing no good. Now, this offense, especially the running game, wanted to prove something tonight. You know, the defense has been so good for Iowa State, keeping them in games, winning games. And... The offense, they feel underachieving up to now. Stanley will go in motion. Third and seven for Deckers. He'll fling it, and it is incomplete. In and out of the hands of Dimitri Stanley, and it's fourth down. Now we'll see uh, what Matt Campbell decides to do. That's a missed opportunity there, because you like to think, even if he would have been short, they would have gone for it, but now they're going to bring out the field goal team. Well, Jace Gilbert seemingly getting his confidence back, making that 35-yarder in the first quarter. And here's another drive that dries up. And they're going to have to settle for a field goal attempt. This one a little longer now from 44. It's on the way. It's long enough, and it is good. Jace Gilbert. Well, he's on a winning streak again. <laughs> so happy for that young man. I mean, the story Don gave earlier was great, talking about the adversity coming off of last week. It was positive. Matt Campbell, when we talked to him yesterday, absolutely did not lose confidence in Gilbert. And he's two for two on the night. He said, I love this young man. Yeah. I, I mean, he helped us win the Iowa game. He was five for five, hadn't missed a kick before last week. Just had a bad day last Saturday. And it was interesting. He said, because look, I mean, in high school, you know, Gilbert, he was a quarterback. He was a safety. He was a shortstop on the baseball team. He was a point guard. You know, so he's a guy that he's a ball player, right? So he's not just some specialist out there. So I think Matt Campbell was alluding to the fact that, look, he, he know, we know he has mental toughness. He's just got to go out there and show it, and he has tonight. <laughs> he's having fun again. Now this season, All-State will celebrate every field goal and extra point made by participating universities by making a donation to the university's general scholarship fund. We say thank you to All-State. Chase Gilbert, one for four last week in Lawrence. He's two for two tonight. 16 plays, 69 yards. The longest drive for Iowa State this season. It covers seven minutes and 43 seconds. Now they're going to bring it out. Here's Malik Knowles, always dangerous, to the middle of the field. And up that left hash, he is swallowed up and driven down at the 25-yard line. Kick off your Sunday with NFL Countdown at 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN this week. 
for the NFL's most dominant defender square off. We get you all access with Micah Parson and Aaron Donald, plus Randy Moss, and you got Moss. Well, with Tua out, Teddy Bridgewater will make his first start as the Dolphins quarterback this week against the Jets. Former K-State quarterback Skylar Thompson, he's now the number two quarterback in Miami. He's one play away. He's a fantastic college player. You see some of his numbers there and now playing the NFL. It's great. And the guy who followed him is the quarterback at K-State. Runs ahead, Adrian Martinez. He'll gain nine. And that's the tough thing about Adrian Martinez or any running quarterback. Iowa State on the back end did a good job covering everybody up, and then Martinez just squirts forward for nine yards. Adrian Martinez. We'll give it to Deuce Vaughn. We'll cut that. Nothing there. So far, Deuce Vaughn has... Pretty quiet. <laughs> That's just how Iowa State likes him. But he's one of those guys you bottle him up, you bottle him up, and then he just finds a little crease and just pops that thing. Just really have loved watching Vaughn over the last couple years, how he approaches the game. His pass blocking is maybe the most underrated part of his game. He's fantastic at it, for, especially for a smaller guy. They need the 45 yard line here. And Deuce Vaughn will get five there on that first down carry. Vaughn with no touchdowns the last three games. He has never had four straight games without a touchdown. But he said this week, yeah, I don't care. As long as we win, if I never score again, that's just fine. Yeah, it just says a lot about that young man. From the day he set foot on this campus, he's been a leader. Really took over as a leader in his sophomore year. And he just wants to win football games and help this team. He had 23 carries, 170 yards last week. Didn't score a touchdown, but so big in that victory. A screen pass uh, to Phillip Brooks. Mason Chambers gets him to the sideline, but it's another first down for this Kansas State offense. This offense just moving the chains. Good decision by Martinez. Gets a great block downfield by the wide receiver, Kid Warner, as well. And he does. He just body language. I always look at that with quarterbacks. He looks calm. He looks confident out there, playing at a high level. First down from the 45-yard line. 7-6, K-State leading. This is a design quarterback keeper for Martinez. Quickly wrapped up by Anthony Johnson. One of the best corners in the Big 12 the last five years. Moved to safety this year. Wow. And, and that is a huge play by Johnson. Because if he is, does not step up and fill that gap, that thing is out the gate. Because all Martinez needs is just get a little bit of step on the outside, and he's gone. He has the speed to do it. Exceptional play filling right there by Johnson. 56th career game for Anthony Johnson. Deuce Vaughn behind Martinez on second down and eight. Man in motion is Brooks. Play action. Dumping it off. It is Brooks. And he'll hop to the 41-yard line of Iowa State. Another big play for the senior out of Lee Summit, Missouri. And that's what having a good running game does, Clay. It's the play action pass. Get everyone flowing that way. They think the outside zone's coming. And then you bring Phillip Brooks back across. Going with a little tempo. Vaughn trying to catch Iowa State napping. It rarely happens. That's going to be a loss of three on the play as Colby Reeder, the <laughs> Delaware transfer, gets to him. This Iowa State defense is just suffocating. We saw it the last couple weeks. We've seen it a lot tonight as well. Colby Reeder running around making a bunch of plays. Orion Vance, we've talked about him. Now the running game just really non-existent so far. Let's see, third in the FBS. Just 19 rushing yards tonight, though. Another inside handoff. Vaughn is going to stumble ahead. Gets back to the original line of scrimmage, but it's going to be third down and long for the Wildcats. As Will McDonald, here's his name called for the first time tonight, the star defensive end. And Vaughn, he's close. Real close to breaking one there. Just breaks a ton of tackles. Now a big third and ten here. You got Malik Knowles 
on the outside to the top of the screen. He's a go-to guy, also 85 in the slot. Warner. Crowded Jack Trice coming alive. Martinez pumps. Wrapped up and he's swallowed up. Will McDonald, the nation's active career leader in sacks. They've been hard to come by a little bit at times this year for Big Mac, but he gets his first one tonight. Just a fantastic job by this Iowa State defense. Good job initially of covering everybody up. Martinez wanted to go to the outside to Warner, but it wasn't there. And then the dip and rip rush. That, that is just a natural speed rush, as any good pass rusher has to do. Got to be able to run that circle and get low and turn those hips at the last time. And he cut that edge and got to the quarterback. He had 11 and a half sacks last year, only one and a half coming into this game here tonight. That's a big one as the Cyclones defense gets off the field. Fair catch for Noel. Iowa State will have it when we come back. Will McDonald. And this Iowa State defense again standing tall here in Ames. Welcome back to Ames, Iowa. Uh, Iowa State's Will McDonald gets his first sack of the game to end a Kansas State drive. He's so athletic. And uh, how about his wingspan? 6'10". He told me he was dunking a basketball by the seventh grade guys. Actually, hoops was his thing until his junior year of high school. The high school football coach would track him down every day. He said, I finally gave in and started playing football. Didn't start till his junior year. <laughs> this is amazing. Know, he's six foot three, a six ten right. wingspan. Uh, that's what I guess you call a freak, right? No, I, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, I mean, I remember having that poster, Michael Jordan, right, the wingspan when I was a young kid, and I think his was only was six foot eleven. You know, Jordan's six foot eight. You know what I mean? So, and what that does, having that long arm span, just allows you to press those offensive linemen. They can't get their hands on you. Six yard pass completion to Noel. Iowa State driving here to try to take the lead. As Jirel Brock playing on that tender right ankle gets it to the 20 yard line, couple of yards short of the line to gain. Now here we go with this Iowa State offense again. Fourth series of the game for the Cyclones. They had a punt on their opening drive and a couple of field goals on their last two series. I think Decker's early in the game looked a little unsettled. I think he's gotten it back the last series or two. Let's see what he has here. Big third down. He's 12 of 19, 143 through the air. He's going to throw again. Has time to do it, but he goes off short to Brock. And he is quickly wrapped up. Beautiful open field tackle by number 41, Austin Moore, the first year starter. Again, the speed of this Kansas State defense. Nowhere to go with the ball, so Decker just shoots it out to the outside. And 41, Austin Moore now playing that Will linebacker. Really doing a great job. They call him the machine. He's a machine out there. No emotions, just gets to the running back and brings him down. Joe Klanderman will tell you, you know, the D line is his strength. But uh, those linebackers are pretty good, too, as Tyler Perkins, a booming punt. And Phillip Brooks can't do anything with him. As K-State will have it Medium at the 32-yard line. 7-6, Kansas State leading with 7.26 to go in the half. Jack Trice Stadium here in Ames, Iowa, the only FPS stadium named after an African-American. Jack was an outstanding offensive lineman for the Cyclones. 1923. Today is the 99th anniversary of his death. He died from injury suffered in a game against Minnesota a couple of days before. One of the great heroes. Absolutely. Early college football. And he was remembered here tonight. K-State has it at their own 32-yard line, a one-point lead. With 7.26 to go in the first half. Adrian Martinez sprinting out. Thought about a pitch. He's probably going to wish he got rid of it. Isaiah Lee up in his grill. Knocks him back for a loss. 
Iowa State has come in here tonight and just shut this K-State run game down. Doing a good job just playing down the line of scrimmage, pushing the offensive lineman back into the lap of Adrian Martinez. And between Vaughn and Martinez, just 18 rush yards on the night. So Iowa State doing what you'd expect them to do, try and take away Kansas State's strength. Now, how did the Wildcats respond? It's going to be up to Adrian Martinez finding some things in the pass game. Well, here we go. He'll throw it down the middle of the field. He intended it for Knowles, who was open, but he sailed it high. Knowles had Jeremiah Cooper, the safety, beat by a step or so, but they can't connect. And Martinez knows he missed one. Knowles was wide open in the middle of the field. It was a missed opportunity. It just looked like he, you know, just didn't really step into that thing and cut that one loose. They really wanted to get Knowles involved in the passing game tonight. He, they haven't been able to connect with him yet. Third down and ten. Martinez scanning. Has time on his back foot. Deep downfield for Knowles. He's got him. And he slips away. Malik Knowles is going to gallop toward the end zone. Ball comes out, and it's still loose. Iowa State has it. Anthony Johnson knocked it out. Unbelievable. Malik Knowles looked like he had a sure six points, and it's going to be an Iowa State touchback. And it was Anthony Johnson, fifth-year senior, coming back, not giving up on the play. And it looked like Malik Knowles, is, it's over, right? Breaks a tackle, he's going to the end zone, time to still look. Reaches around and just pops that thing out on about the one inch line, incredible play. Uh, that, that's one that Matt Campbell was gonna show about a hundred times in defensive meetings here this week, just not giving up on the play. That is winning football, incredible. Malik Knowles just got robbed. Wow. That's the thing as a receiver, you, you, you think you're breaking a couple of tackles. There's no way somebody's going to come up from behind me. Well, Anthony Johnson, in his speed, just reaches up at the last possible second and knocks that ball away. Just an incredible play. Tenth takeaway for the Iowa State defense, second only in the Big 12 to Kansas State. And now Deckers and the offense get it back. See if they can take advantage of it. Jairel Brock straight ahead. He'll get a handful. <laughs> Farmer get I mean, right? Like crazy things yeah. are happening here. Well, the state now gets some momentum back. I mean, his crowd back in this game. This Iowa State team, they're back to back. One score losses to Baylor and at Kansas. Trying to get back on the right track. Hunter Deckers has some time. Nothing downfield. Finds a seam. Big run for the quarterback. Deckers up close to midfield. T.J. Smith, the free safety, finally trips him up, but Deckers gains 24 on the play. Kind of looked like Adrian Martinez out there, right? And I remember seeing this a couple weeks ago. Just not really a huge part of his game, running the ball, but when that lane opens up like that, go ahead and take it, young man. Full start, number 55, offense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. It's not Darryl Simmons, the right guard. And what I loved about that run is he was decisive about it. Looks around, scans, nothing open, boom, tuck that thing and go. Don't second guess it, don't half go, turn it on. And that's just one more element right there to add to Hunter Decker's game. He's a good athlete. Yeah, he yeah, is. He really is. Uh, 2019 Iowa Gatorade Player of the Year out of West Sioux High School, just outside of Sioux City. Eli Sanders back in the game. They fake the handoff to him, and it's Decker's again. He's feeling kind of <laughs> froggy right now. He yeah. wants to jump a little more. That's a gain of six. Mason makes the tackle. But Deckers was an all-state player in three sports. Basketball, baseball, and football. In fact, Chris Kleiman 
tried to get him to Kansas State. Right. Yeah, just one of those high school athletes that was good at everything, right? Every sport he tried, every position he played, he was good at it. And you're seeing that's why he's leading this offense right now. He's backpedaling on second and nine, and he'll just throw it to the sideline incomplete. Daniel Green, the middle linebacker, was really heating up Hunter Deckers. So now a third pressure. down and nine. A lot of pressure, and you like to think Kansas State done a good job bringing pressure tonight. Young quarterback, hasn't seen every look, hasn't seen every blitz. Make him uncomfortable. And this is a playmaking defense for Kansas State. We talked about Iowa State, you know, and their takeaways. They've got 10 on the year now. 11 for Kansas State. Nine coming through interception. Trying to get off the field on third down. Deckers pass to Brock. It's tipped. And it lands incomplete. Austin Moore had it hit off his helmet. Well, they say use your head, young man, right? That's exactly what Austin Moore did. And what an exceptional job. They tried to leak Brock out of the backfield late, but Moore, he's a film junkie, studies watch. Call that appeal call. If the running back goes outside, you got to appeal on him, pick him up. And he goes right off his helmet, perfect coverage. Austin Moore had an interception last week against Texas Tech. <laughs> Wasn't looking at that one, otherwise he might have had another one. Now Tyler Perkins had a 52-yard punt on his last kick. This is another good one. He's going to bound at the 10-yard line and roll close to the 5. 46-yard punt and another long field for the Wildcats when we come back to Ames. Late stages of the first half, one-point contest. Number 20, Kansas State has the lead. They have the football with 4-12 to go in the second quarter. But it's not been a prototypical K-State night, especially running the football. Third best in the country, 267 per game, just 18 rushing yards tonight. And Deuce Vaughn, leading rusher in the Big 12, six carries, 10 rushing yards. Adrian Martinez from the end zone, going deep. Looking for Garber, incomplete. It's pretty well covered in the secondary by Porter. And just to go back to those rushing yards, if you're Iowa State's defense, you're saying that this is exactly what we preached all, all week and we would take this. But for Iowa State fans, Cyclone fans are at home saying, yeah, we're having this great performance, but look at the score. Right? They can't really produce anything offensively off that great job stopping the run. DJ Giddens into the ball game now in the backfield. Physical redshirt freshman running back. He comes in to spell Deuce Vaughn from time to time. He'll get his first touch. Gets it to the 10-yard line. Reader wraps him up. It's a gain of four. The last possession for K-State looked like a touchdown. Malik Knowles fumbles at the goal line. We'll see how big that is at the end of this game. It was a backbreaker when it happened. Hard to come back from. And now they're here backed up in their own territory. K-State offense and that Big touchdown on the opening series. They have done nothing offensively since. Three receivers to the near side. Martinez on the draw. Will gallop ahead. He's got the first down and more. Shakes loose. And almost stepped out of a tackle on the far sideline. But Bo Freeler is able to bring him down. But that's a gain of 19 for Martinez doing what Martinez does. He's finally able to, to get going, get some positive yards in the run game, and that's how they usually start. Right up the middle, and then he bounces that thing to the outside. He has game-breaking speed. One broken tackle away from taking it the distance. Good to see Bo Freeler yeah. back out on the field for Iowa State. He's been missing a lot of games lately. Missed most of that Baylor game because of a targeting call. Pressured, Martinez is swung down. Another sack for Will McDonald, his second of the game. Fantastic job of movement by Iowa State and Will McDonald on defense. You see him off to the left, he's almost playing like a defensive tackle. He comes on the inside twist stunt, but no one picks him up and he goes right to the quarterback. I mean, you gotta know where number nine is at all times and when that thing opens up like that, that's not good for Adrian Martinez. One of only four players in Big 12 history with 30 career sacks. He's got 32 now. Martinez 
We'll get a chunk of that back. After that 12-yard loss, how about Deuce Vaughn throwing his body around, leading the way for Martinez on that play? Well, like we talked about earlier, one of the most underrated parts of his game is the block. He watched this, comes out there and just sticks it. Got Anthony Johnson coming up, a big-time safety. Provides a nice block there, Deuce Vaughn. K-State 2 of 5 on third down. They're not going to pick this one up. Fourth down. Gary Vaughn, weak side linebacker in his fifth year, Iowa makes State. the stop. And Iowa State calls a timeout. Chris Kleiman told us this week, Rocky, winning on early downs is going to be key for this offense tonight. They really haven't done that. This offense has looked a little out of sync. They've got the lead, but they're going to have to punt it away again. Yeah, they're going to punt it away, and they've gotten some big plays in the pass game, the run game, outside of really just one nice run by Adrian Martinez. They've bottled them up. Jalen Noel back to return this punt for Iowa State. About a minute and a half on the clock. Zentner off the side of his foot a bit. That's a bit of a help with the bounce. And Iowa State will have it at the 35-yard line. Just a 29-yard punt for Zender. Well, 8 Eastern on ESPN. Monday Night Football featuring an AFC West rivalry game between the Raiders. Coming out their first win of the year against Denver. And Patrick Mahomes in the 3-1 Chiefs. Coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown at 6. Of course, Mahomes tore up this league back in the day. And he is flourishing. <laughs> in Kansas City. How about that play he had last week against Tampa Bay? He runs to the right side, spins around, underhands the ball to yeah. Edward Zolaire. Incredible. Deckers, he's going to be sacked. There's Felix and Yudike Uzama, who had three sacks last week. Play. This was the old dip and rip, club and rip. Just smacks that offensive line's hand down and rips it back up, gets to the quarterback. We'll see how aggressive Iowa State is on this series. In Kansas State, they've got all of their timeouts. They have decided not to use any here. So we go under a minute. I don't know why Iowa State's not using one. The clock's ticking away, and they have two of them here. Deckers, another short pass to Brock out of the backfield. Spins away from a tackler, gets to the 28-yard line. Desmond Purnell brings him down to the grass. It's a gain of four clock running. And still a lot of timeouts on the board. Nobody asking for a whistle. Yeah, look to be very content to just let this thing tick down and go into halftime. K-State will get the ball coming back out in the third quarter, though. You'd like to see a little bit more aggression by this Iowa State offense here, but... Maybe that's an indication of just how they feel they're playing right now. Well, interesting first half. An explosive play from Kansas State right out of the gate. 81 yards. Martinez to Brooks to get the scoring started. Then it kind of fell into a lull. And we've got a 7-6 game at the half. Number 20, Kansas State leading Iowa State on the road. The Wildcats get the football to start the second half. Uh, it's Farmageddon, 30 minutes. <laughs> Another 30 minutes to come here at Jack Trice Stadium on a beautiful night here in early October. After the commercial, Matt Berry, Joey Galloway, and Jesse Palmer with our halftime report. 7-6 Wildcats after one. Welcome back to ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Dr. Pepper. Absolutely gorgeous night for football here in Ames, Iowa. And after one half, number 20, Kansas State leading Iowa State 7-6. to six. Iowa State shutting down that K-State running game, which is best in the Big 12. Adrian Martinez, Deuce Vaughn. They have lit the world on fire the last couple of weeks, but they have been held in check. Just 44 rushing yards on 15 carries combined for those two characters. Iowa State's offense, again, kind of pedestrian. Uh, still, it should be 14-6. Malik Knowles 
He was right at the goal line, had it knocked away from behind. It's a turnover. We'll see how big of a play that actually turns out to be as we move ahead. Alongside Rocky Boyman, I'm Clay Matvick. Where's this game going to be won? <laughs> Something tells me Iowa State's offense, either way it goes, is going to have a big say in this. They have to because right now their defense is playing the game plan to perfection. You're yeah. holding this number one ranked Big 12 running, rushing attack to 48 yards but your offense is not helping you out. They had a few explosive plays here and there, but just two field goals to show for it. That offense has got to complement the job that defense has done in the first half. Talking about explosive plays on the third play from scrimmage for Kansas State tonight, Adrian Martinez throwing a big touchdown pass to Phillip Brooks that goes 81 yards, and you thought, okay, K-State is off and running again. That's right, it has been the big plays in the run game the last couple weeks, but third play of the game, huge play out of the pass game getting the ball to Brooks. And then they looked like they had another game-breaking play that they line up here, but just an, out of, after an incredible effort by the safety, Anthony Johnson, what looked like a touchdown ends up being a touchback. Iowa State gets the ball, and it's just kind of been that way. You know, last week, Iowa, Kansas State's offense has some laws. You can see Adrian Martinez can't believe it. And the other thing Kansas State's got to do a better job, and that's accounting for Will McDonald. He's had a fantastic first half, the dip and rip underneath, nice speed rush. And then earlier, comes in on the inside on the twist stunt, brings Adrian Martinez to the ground. So this defense is playing incredible right now. Just, again, getting that offense get out there and help those boys out. Will McDonald having another great game against Kansas State, forced a couple of fumbles against the Wildcats in last year's win in Manhattan. All right, for uh, Warren, what to expect in the second half? Let's go down to Don Davenport. Clay and Rocky, both of these head coaches want to see a little more from their offenses. For Kansas State head coach Chris Kleiman, he told me those explosive plays are out there. They see them. They've got to hit them. The throw has to be there. The catch has to be there. And then also the finish has to be there. He said they had a little bit of success with the QB run late in that first half. So expect to see a little bit more of that coming up here in the second half. As for Iowa State, Matt Campbell said precision and detail. That's how they will turn those threes into seven offensively. And something I want to point out, guys, for Kansas State, you know, Iowa State held on to the ball for over 18 minutes in that first half. And Coach told me he had been into the locker room. He had to get his defense in there. They were absolutely gassed at the end of that first half. Yeah, you just wonder how that factors in the time of possession. Again, Iowa State's been holding the ball, but not getting any points out of it to show for. But does that approach, you know, help out and as they keep continue to wear on this defense as the third and fourth quarter go on? One consolation for Iowa State is they seemingly have the psyche of their kicker back in check. Yes. Jace Gilbert hitting from 35 yards and from 44 yards in that first half to get him off the schneid after missing those three field goal attempts in Lawrence last week. Shackford kicks this one into the end zone and Knowles will take a knee and K-State will have it at the 25-yard line against this Iowa State defense which is allowing just 4.2 points and 96 total yards in the second half of games this season. So Rocky, as good as this Iowa State defense has been already at times tonight, they seemingly get better as the game goes on and Adrian Martinez will have to deal with that. Absolutely, and to Don's point, that Chris Kleiman made about his defense being tired. They need to start running the ball better for that reason alone, right? Keep that defense on the sideline a little bit. Let them rest because it's going to be a big second half. Martinez is going to run it on the first play. Maybe this is a sign of what they talked about in the locker room. And again, Deuce Vaughn leading the way. <laughs> I mean, you got a five foot five running back as your lead blocker. Not something you would normally see in college football, but it's the second time he's done this night. Looking, find someone to line up. And now Vaughn will get a turn. Oh, he's tripped up nicely by Bo Freeler. And it'll be third down, but it's pretty obvious here. Kansas State going back to what they do best. It's going to be number 22. It's going to be a lot of number nine. Yeah, you got two guys that are absolutely dynamic, especially in the run game. Nine and 22. That's their advantage. They got to ride these two horses the rest of this game. Third down and three. And 
for Iowa State here. Cannot allow an escape lane for Adrian Martinez. Oh. And K-State does not shoot themselves in the foot very often. They rank second in the Big 12 in fewest penalty yards per game. Just under 42 yards. You can see that just is killing Chris Klein. Killing him, yeah. Not something they normally do. First-year play caller Colin Klein now has to deal with a third down and eight. Martinez crossing route incomplete. He wanted Cade Warner, who hasn't been targeted hardly at all tonight. T.J. Tampa, good job in defense. The cornerback out of St. Pete. I didn't call T.J. Tampa's name yet tonight, but it makes a great play on third down. K-State's offensive line did a good job blocking right there. Iowa State lined up both Will McDonald and M.J. Anderson off to the right side, but they picked it up, but the DB forces the incompletion. So John Haycock's defense doing a great job getting off the field right away. The penalty doesn't help K-State's cause. Jalen Knoll will try to spin away. He's going to be cut down after about a yard return. It's a 51-yard punt for Ty Zentner. Hunter Decker's in that first half, 14 of 23, 143 yards passing. Completed 61% of his throws. But... Again, that running game, pretty much non-existent. And not enough, probably, of Xavier Hutchinson, if you ask Tom Manning. I was going to say, it's been a long time since we've called number eight's name. But for Deckers, he's just been inconsistent tonight. He's done a good job making a couple big plays, but also a couple plays. Ball's a little bit behind the receiver, a little bit high. Got to settle in here. And another penalty flight. Ball start, number 55, offense. Five-yard penalty, first down. That's the second penalty against Daryl Simmons tonight. He was making his 30th consecutive start on the Iowa State offensive line. Iowa State trying to end a two-game slide. They've lost those games by combined 10 points and another tight one here tonight against K-State, down one. Their first series of the third quarter. They'll run it here with Brock. And not much. So it's going to be second down and longer. Again, Jirel Brock. We didn't even know if we were going to see him tonight, Rocky. But that injured right ankle that was suffered on the fourth play of the game last week. What have you noticed from his style here tonight? Is he still favoring it? I, I, he just doesn't have any real breakaway in him right now, right? And, you know, look, he's not Brees Hall. He's not that kind of runner with, you know, that kind of game-breaking ability. But he's usually been a little bit better. You wonder if the ankle is a little bit part of the problem here. Uh, it's behind the receiver, Hutchinson. Incomplete. And now third down and long. Hey, you guys are talking about Jirel Brock, how he would describe his game. I remember he told me a couple of weeks ago, I know I'm not the fastest back, but strength plays a big part in how I run. I feel like I can stick my foot in the ground and go. So, yeah, Rocky, that's clearly affected with an ankle injury. Yeah, it just doesn't have that power, like you said, where he puts that foot in the ground and goes. Not really seeing it. They need a ton here. They need the 34-yard line to keep the drive going. Deckers, and that's going to be short. Again, Xavier Hutchinson cut that route off too short, Rocky. Makes a catch, but ends up about three yards shy of the line to gain. Saw that a couple times last week, breaking it short of the sticks. Not, not sure if that's a scheme issue or Xavier Hutchinson not knowing where the sticks are, but can't have that, especially on a bang-bang play like that. You're not going to get many yards after the catch. Got to get past the sticks. Fourth punt tonight for Tyler Perkins. And it's going to take a favorable Cyclones roll to about the 21-yard line. 47-yard punt for the true freshman out of Ohio. Iowa State trailing by one. Media timeout. 
College football primetime presented by Dr. Pepper, 7-6 Kansas State, 12.07 to go in the third. The NHL season begins in earnest Tuesday night on ESPN with a doubleheader, the Lightning and the Rangers at Madison Square Garden, 7.30 Eastern, and then the Golden Knights in L.A. squaring off against the Kings. Predators beat the Sharks 4-1 in the Czech Republic last night, so the NHL regular season already underway. It'll get going here in the States on Tuesday. Adrian Martinez, he's got to get out of the pocket, has a man downfield, it's Malik Knowles who catches it at the 30-yard line. That's an eight-yard pass play for Colin Klein's offense. It's been a tough night for the first-year play call. It really has. Colin Klein, of course, a Heisman finalist in 2012. Kind of similar to Adrian Martinez, right, with his running ability. Doing a good job in his first year as a, as a play caller. But, but for me, Clay, this Kansas State offense, this is like the third time we've seen this against Tulane in kind of a lull the whole game. Last week, came out against Texas Tech. First quarter, they're hitting on all cylinders. Then for the second, third quarter, they kind of go to sleep. Same thing tonight. Opening series, touchdown, and after that, it's just been a lot of just kind of nothing. And loss to Tulane, their only loss. 17-10 disappointment. They played inspired football the last couple of weeks. It's been quite the reverse tonight, most of the night. But now Martinez will keep the drive alive with another first down on the hoof. Anthony Johnson brings him down to the ground. You know, it only takes one big run, though, for Adrian Martinez, and that could change the whole feel of this game. It does, and that's the thing with him, is he's, he's a big game-breaking type runner. He's got that speed, so just running with so much confidence, unlike I've seen the last couple years. And the thing for him has just been, you know, kind of getting out of his own head a little bit and just uncorking that thing. Play fake, Martinez throws, another comebacker to Knowles. That's gonna be another first down as this K-State offense is starting to find some traction. That's right, starting to get a little rhythm, a couple first downs here. I think I need to get back to running that ball. Stay with it. You're the number one rush offense in the Big 12. I'd like to get Deuce Vaughn yes. on track. It's not been an, a, a, a typical Deuce Vaughn night. Eight carries, just 11 yards rushing for the number one rusher in the Big 12. He'll try to get a bunch here. Bounces to the outside. Now that's a good run, more like what we expect from number 22. Gets it inside the 45-yard line before Jeremiah Cooper is able to wrangle him toward the sideline. Powerful run. Stops the starts. Just a good, good job. I mean, he's so small, he kind of hides behind his offensive line. Hayden Gillum, the center, just hides a little bit, and then boom, pops out the other side. It's hard to find in that mess of bodies out there. Second down and one. Quick flare out to Knowles. A lot of room. He's got the first down and about five or six yards more. Down to the 36, Darian Porter on the stop. That's a gain of eight, and now K-State. The first the ball down. Well. Yeah, that, that was a good sight of just there by Adrian Martinez. That was a run all the way, but Martinez looked out and he saw Knowles with some off coverage and shot the ball out to him. Picks up the first down. Great job. I think we're seeing uh, some of the first half game plan come alive here in the second half. Uh, Colin Klein wanted to get Knowles involved early tonight. That really didn't happen in the first half. We've seen him here on this drive. And now Martinez sprinting out to the right behind a couple of blockers. Good blocks, too. He's got another first down. That's a gain of 13. Nice patient run. Gage <laughs> Martinez tangled up in the net out there after a nice run. I love the patience he showed. Just kind of waited, patient. Don't outrun your blockers. Stay behind him. Stay behind Vaughn and then pops it out the outside. Fourth leading rusher in the Big 12, 94 yards per game. He's got 12 carries now, 58 yards tonight. Deuce Vaughn to his right. 
And see if the Deuce can get loose. He'll get it inside the 20 to the 19 yard line. You know, the thing about Deuce Vaughn is even though he's small, 5'6, 176, he's durable. And with the depth at running back for K-State, he really needs to be. They don't have a lot behind him. Well, they lost a lot of his backups to the transfer portal, right? That's the reality of college football these days. But, yeah, for a smaller guy, you think, oh, he's going to get hurt a lot. Hasn't been the case. You know, he reminds me of Darren Sproles, who, of course, played at Kansas State. And, you know, you think, oh, he's not going to be durable. That guy played like 16 years in the league. Nice catch, Deuce Vaughn. And that's the other thing that he does. Great receiver. Blocking and his hands are elite. Guys, you know, it's interesting. At just 5'6", a lot of coaches wanted to just use him as a gadget backer in the return game. And when he visited Kansas State in the spring of 2019 with his mom, coach told them immediately, I want you here as a premier running back. So that played big in his decision. His mom, Marquette, his dad, Chris. They like Deuce better than Junior. His real name is Christopher Vaughn II, but uh, <laughs> they decided to call him Deuce. On third and short, Martinez decides to keep it, and he's not going to have enough for the first down. Great pursuit by Colby Reeder, the Sam linebacker, who's had a great night tonight. Of course, recovered that fumble in the end zone. That's going to be a loss on the play. It is. You can see Martinez frustrated a little bit. He's scanning the field, looking for an open receiver, and they, okay, I'm going to try to score forward. Can't do it. Iowa State defense bowing up yet again. So Chris Tennant is going to come out to attempt a 33-yard field goal. He hasn't missed a field goal since week two against Missouri. He's made seven straight. And it is no good. He pushed it off to the right. That's his third miss of the year. And it stays a one-point game in Ames. Near capacity crowd here in Ames tonight. You're watching the Big 12 Conference on ESPN. Low scoring affair here at Jack Trice Stadium. Alongside Rocky Boyman on play, Matt McDonald Davenport down on the field. 7-6, number 20, K-State. Trying to keep the streak alive here on the road. Big 12 standings. Got three undefeated teams in the league. TCU, Oklahoma State, and these Wildcats at 2-0. Our Fansville College Football Update brought to us by Dr. Pepper. Another weird, wild day <laughs> really in the was. Big 12. Oklahoma State hung on to beat the Red Raiders. But how about TCU and the win that they got to give Kansas its first loss? And Oklahoma slammed by Texas. Oklahoma is not a good football team at the moment. Offensively, defensively. Mm. Deckers to a wide open man. It's Hutchinson. It's an easy first down for Iowa State. Down a point with 6-10 to go. There we go. I haven't called number eight's name in a little while. Start off a drive. First down. Get number eight going. And they have really struggled running the ball here tonight. They've tried to establish it. Just not really much going for Terrell Brock. Now we see Silas in the game. Silas was the main running back last week when Brock got hurt. He gets a carry here. And he stopped just short of the 40 by Sincere Mason. It's a gain of six. That'll make it second down and five. Silas has shown a couple times just some burst out there. They bring Jarrell Brock back in the football game. Jarrell Brock was such a big key in that win against Iowa earlier in the year. 27 carries for 100 yards. But most of the ball carriers tonight for Iowa State have been limited. Good initial move, and then he bounces away and picks up the first down. Great effort by Jirel Brock, one of his most inspiring runs tonight. His first run of the game was five yards, and, and until that one, that was it's been his longest. Good job here. Bottled up inside, spin it to the outside, pick up a first down. Again, they need this 
run game to get going. Haven't had it the last two weeks, just 92 yards combined the last two weeks coming into this game. Deckers will throw, and that's going to be high and incomplete. Going to bring up second down. Want to get back to the Oklahoma Sooners. Maybe the most humbling loss in a long time wow. for that program. Uh, you know, Dylan Gabriel did not play for Oklahoma. Now have a three-game losing streak for the first time since 1998. Yeah, it's just, I mean, you knew the offense would struggle, but the defense has struggled a ton this year. Brent Venables, the head coach, no one saw that coming. Deckers. And he tried to force that one in to Hutchinson. He wants a flag. He's not going to get one. Josh Hayes played that beautifully. Let's see if there's any contact. Wonder if the right arm of Josh Hayes got wrapped around the hips. And maybe a little bit of a tug there before Hutchinson got into his break. It was just enough to affect the route. Sixth year senior. Playing a 60th career game tonight. Many of those at North Dakota State where he helped win championships. Transferred in from Virginia. Here's Deckers throwing. The lefty right on the screws to Sean Shaw. And that'll be a first down for Iowa State. That was a good looking pass from Deckers. Good looking pass. A confident throw from Deckers. And that's what he needs. It's been spotty here tonight. Boom. The back foot plants. Unleashes that thing. And Again, picks up the first down. Second catch for Shaw. Now Iowa State in plus territory. He's got five wide and an empty backfield. And now he's going to look to the sideline. They'll change up the play. Fullback Jared Russ goes to the left side of the formation, and that's where Deion Silas wants to run. And that's another good pickup for Silas. Echo Boydo got him to the sideline. I think Iowa State needs to consider leaving Deion Silas in the game more. He just has that burst that you need. You know, sometimes, especially with how good Kansas State is up front, you know, it's going to be hard to just pound, pound, pound away. But he's got a little more juice to it, a little more just acceleration in his game. Well, Matt Campbell was effusive in his praise for Silas this week when we talked to him. You know, he got 50 snaps last week, career-high 12 carries. He showed Matt Campbell something in that game a week ago. Yeah, he stayed ready. They'll feed him again. A little wiggle. He's going to be stopped just shy of the line to gain, it looks like. Austin Moore with the tackle. No, they're going to give him the first down. So Deion Silas will keep this drive going. Silas is the horse to ride right now. Got to keep him in the game. He's in the flow. He's feeling it. He's got that acceleration once he gets to the second level. And also, he can get to the outside a little bit better right now than Brock can. Of course, Brock dealing with that ankle injury. It's got to be a part of the issue with him. The other running back on the roster, Cartavius Norton, still out. He's uh, been banged up all year. Hamstring injury and ankle injury have kept him out of action the last few weeks. Silas again. Man, he's the workhorse right now. But here's where the, the, the fence has appeared for this offense so many times this year. Starting to get down around that red zone. Just have not been able to convert these drives into touchdowns. Here's another long drive, too, for Iowa yeah. State. This will be the 10th play. I wonder how this is affecting this K-State defense. Played well, but got to be tired at this point in the game. Little receiver screen and trying to fit through the tunnel is Hutchinson, but that pass was a little low. He had to adjust to the catch first, and then Jalen Pickle is able to wrap him up pretty quickly. So it's going to bring up a third down, third and two. Right, years past, third and two, this area of the field, it was going to be Brees Hall. They're going to hand him the ball, and it's going to be a first down. Obviously, he's not a part of the equation anymore. They miss him. But do they have the confidence in Deion Siles to pick this thing up? Well, he's on the sideline right now. They bring Brock back in. Brock runs into a wall. He will not have it. In fact, it's not even close. That K-State run defense looking like the Cyclones run defense there. It was Drake Cheatham at the point of attack. 
a tremendous effort by this K-State defense after a long drive. Again, Cheatham, we called his name early in the game. And now I think we see Brock down on the field. The Iowa State running back down on the field. He's being attended to. We'll step aside. Well, what a difference a week makes. Last week, Jace Gilbert missed three field goals, including the potential game-tying 37-yarder with 32 seconds left. He's two for two tonight and can give Iowa State the lead here from 43 yards up. How about you, Jace Gilbert? Wow. Cyclones lead it for the first time tonight. Happy for that young man right there. What a bounce back. Time now for the AT&T 5G best moment, and it really is the difference in this game. It, it should probably be 14 to nine right now. Malik Knowles, the turnover at the goal line is key. Oh, absolutely, that was huge. I mean, it was just one, looked like they were gonna start to break this game open. Up, put 14 points on the board, but just right at the end, Anthony Johnson comes away. And it's been the big difference in this game. It's always the little things. Little things you do, they win football games. Coming in late, popping the ball out, giving it back to your offense. And that's what you get out of a Matt Campbell coach team. Just discipline, playing to the whistle. And that turnover for Kansas State, just the third turnover for this team this year. I mean, they've done such a great job protecting the football. One of the main reasons that they're four and one. Absolutely. But now they're gonna get the ball back here. And you know, it's just a matter of this Iowa State defense has just been incredible tonight, especially stopping the run. Do they have enough juice left in them here? Shackford. The short kick, this is going to be taken at the five-yard line by Knowles. He is always something to watch on kickoff return. He's brought back three in his career. He's going to be stopped just across the 20-yard line. Well, Big 12 now on ESPN Plus, a must-have for Big 12 fans. College basketball season just around the corner, starting on November 7th, less than a month from now. Basketball season? That's right. <laughs> over 50 games for you there, plus over 200 women's games, soccer, volleyball, wrestling, baseball, softball. All ahead on Big 12 now on ESPN Plus. If you're a fan, you got to have it. Sign up today at ESPNPlus.com slash Big 12 now. It hasn't been a great offensive night for Adrian Martinez and the Wildcats. Martinez taking a deep shot, looking for Warner, and he's going to be interfered with. Penalty flag in the secondary, no doubt about it. TJ Tampa's been good tonight, but he's going to be called for the P.I. Ball hung up in the air. And Trying to find it. Number two, defense. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Nice break there for Kansas State. Trying to go to one of his favorite targets, Cade Warner on the outside, just kind of fighting there. You see they're just grabbing the left arm, can't do it. It's right there in front of the official. You can get away with a little kind of around the belt pulling a little bit, but once it gets extended away from the body on the arm, it's easy for the official to see. From the 36-yard line, Martinez wanted to throw deep again. Cranks it downfield. This time, nobody there. Phillip Brooks, the closest man. He was double-covered. Anthony Johnson going step for step. How about Anthony Johnson again? Incredible. Just a, such a smart play. And moving to safety this year, he's got the play of the game. He really does. And he's one of those experienced veterans on on that defense, along with Orion Vance and Will McDonald, of course. He's making great football plays tonight. Three hundred five yards total offense for K-State. Trying to get something going here. A screen for Vaughn, and he's going to be hog-tied at about the 44-yard line by Reeder. 
Seventh year of college football for Colby Reader, and, and he plays like a wise football <laughs> player. There's a lot of wisdom in that helmet. No question about it. Brother, of course, great player. Third down and two here. What do you like? Get, get their hand in the quarter here. We'll see what K-State does to start the fourth quarter. They're down on the road in Farmageddon. Number 20, Kansas State. They're down here on the road. First time trailing entering the fourth quarter this season. Chris Kleiman and his team looking at a third and two. Is this two down territory? I think so. I look for an Adrian Martinez run right here. He hasn't had many big ones tonight. Not like we're used to seeing anyways. Warner went in motion. He'll throw a lead block, but Martinez is bottled up and thrown back. No gain, fourth down. Just an incredible job by this Iowa State defense. How you win against Adrian Martinez, you force him to go sideways. Able to just clog up those north-south rush lanes. He had to bounce it, and then they closed in on him. And of course, Anthony Johnson. My God, coming from depth, blows up the blocker right into the lap of Adrian Martinez. An incredible football play. And bad insult to injury for K-State. Deuce Vaughn is limping off the field. And so if it was two down territory, K-State maybe has changed its mind because it's fourth and two and they're going to punt. Yeah, with a loss on that run like that's going to force the punt. This Iowa State defense is for real. Wow. Jalen Knoll back to return. He's standing at the 12-yard line. Ty Zentler. He hasn't had a ton of booming kicks tonight, but he'll drop this one inside the 20. 40-yard punt. That's where the Cyclones will have it. Early stages of the fourth quarter. Can the Cyclones get a top 25 upset tonight? Matt Campbell has done such a great job here in Ames, looking for his 11th win against a top 25 opponent here tonight since taking the job. And Iowa State has beaten at least one ranked team each of the last five years. Last year was number eight Oklahoma State that came in here to Ames and got beat. He loves it out here. Gets asked all the time when you're moving, when you're going somewhere else. <laughs> Not in that. He wants to stay here. Well, he's dedicated to this community, to this program. As Jalen Knoll makes that catch, he'll get five on first down. This is the fourth Iowa State drive to start inside their own 20. They've had some long, sustained drives. Uh, they've had to settle for field goals, though, three times here tonight. Absolutely, and having long sustained drives has not been their issue. They had, of course, against Iowa, 99-yard drive to win the game. Last week they had one, didn't get any points out of it. They need one here to sustain and then get points. Deion Silas back in the game, looking for room, trying to find the edge, and Josh Hayes is going to deny him, and now the crowd wants a penalty flag, and so far none thrown. It's going to be a loss of five on the play. Josh Hayes came from basically center field. And this play just gets strung out here. Silas is trying to get to the edge, and you'll see number one just burst into the screen. What a great tackle, finishing it off. Well, Joe Kleiderman's defense has looked pretty good, too, here tonight. This has been a defensive slugfest. Another team doing exceptionally well on third down tonight. Penalty flags all over the place. It'll be a false start. False start. Number 83, offense. Five yard penalty. Still third down. Sean Hanneke, the tight end. And after a nice first down play, now we're going backwards in these two here. Hunter Decker is trying to end his first career losing streak as the starting quarterback. Get their first win in Big 12 play. Deckers will flip it out short. 
And that's Sanders, Eli Sanders trying to get out of a tackle at the 15-yard line. And that's not going to happen. Julius Brents keeps him wrapped up. And now K-State ready to get the football back and probably pretty good field position as the Cyclones are going to have to punt. Disappointing drive for Iowa State. They get the stop and the offense just can't get anything going. It's been an issue really most of the season. Bill Snyder won a lot of games because of special teams at Kansas State. Still the case with the Wildcats. That tradition continues, but boy, return are so hard to come by. Kickoff and punt returns, you don't see them hardly at all yeah, anymore. I mean, kickoffs usually go to the back of the end zone, punts. The punt teams are so good at directionally kicking, it makes it tough. This week's college football rankings brought to us by Capital One. You see Alabama wow. in a slugfest with Texas A&M, of course, during the offseason. Nick Saban and Jimbo Fisher, they had words. A lot leading up to this game here tonight. See the Clemson and USC. Both in pretty good shape right now, both leading. Mission finally started to pull away from Indiana. DJ Giddens in the ball game. At running back, but it'll be Adrian Martinez stepping across the 45-yard line down at the 46. Reader with another tackle from a Sam linebacker spot. You know, Iowa State last week, the miscues which we talked about, really a big part of that loss at Kansas. Tonight, we've seen miscues for K-State. The turnover at the goal line by Knowles, the missed field goal, just some things not going yeah. right. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's those lulls where they, they look so explosive, and then a period of time goes by with nothing happening. Nice catch, Knowles, first down. And now they're back on the plus side of the field. That's a 10-yard pickup. Remember last series, Deuce Vaughn went out of the game. Hey guys, Deuce Vaughn just came back in the game. He spent quite a bit of time in the injury tent, went in limping after their last possession on his right leg. It looks like they have put a brace on his knee area, a sleeve and a brace. He was running over here on the sideline, went up to coach, and he's now back in the ballgame. We talked about the depth of running back, Don. I mean, they just don't have it. No, they they need Deuce Vaughn healthy. He's out there now. Yeah, Knowles is going to pass back to Martinez. He's got it first down. So Colin Klein going to his bag of tricks to move the chance. Great play call. Time out for an injury. Get, get the pitch there, and then Adrian Martinez wheeling up the sideline. Best timeout. throw by Knowles, but... Got a man down for Iowa State. 10.55 to go. Back in a moment. ESPN College Football is presented by delicious ice-cold Dr. Pepper. The one fans deserve. Iowa State defensive coordinator John Haycock saying, you know, especially the seniors have steadied this defense. In fact, the defense has steadied the entire team. It was good to see Colby Reeder get off under his own power, but I don't know if we'll see him the rest of the game. It didn't look good as he kind of limped off. DJ Giddens in the backfield for K-State. First down. At the 31-yard line of the Cyclones, it is Giddens. Right into the teeth of the clones D. So Kansas State has a couple of 100 yard receivers tonight. Malik Knowles and Phillip Brooks, but it's been a quiet night because most of their yardage has come on a couple of plays. A couple of big plays, yeah. Phillip Brooks, third play of the game. Then Malik Knowles, of course, had the long reception. The head was ball was popped away on, on about the one inch line. So yeah, they've got the numbers, but not on the score column. Martinez has a little room, but it quickly closes as he's dumped at the 25-yard line by Anthony Johnson. Third down coming up. Yeah, and, and I think it's going to be a lot of Adrian Martinez in the run game. We saw Deuce Vaughn come back for a play or two, but he's, now he's been out. He had that brace on his right knee, so it's going to be up to Martinez to get the run yards. Here. Well, Chris Kleiman said, we're going to ride nine, we're going to ride 22. That's our offense. And it's crunch time right now. Under 10 minutes to go. 
Martinez keeps again, finds a wiggle room right up the middle, and he's got the first down. Great play design, that's where he's most dangerous, up the middle. Again, when you can force Martinez to go lateral onto the sideline, you can tighten him down, but when he's going forward, he's got the speed to just get a little crease and hit it. Who's that remind you of right there? Colin Klein, right? <laughs> And he's the guy making the gun go That's bang right. upstairs We're, right now. Which so. is why I think this relationship works out so well. He knows the kind of player Martinez is and can call plays that benefit him. Out of the gun with Giddens behind him. Now over to his left. It will be Giddens. Giddens bouncing to the outside, but he's ankle tackled by Bo Freeland. Adrian Martinez has been re-energized after four years in Lincoln. The fact that he's working with Colin Klein, obviously a big part of the reason that Martinez is having the, uh, the success he's having. Absolutely. It's been a great marriage, those two. Again, as you pointed out, just both Klein being that same style of player, great runner. I'm going to finish this drive off here. K-State's touchdown came on their opening series of the game. Nothing since. Time to throw. And that's caught at the 12-yard line. Ben Sinnott, the first time he's been targeted tonight. And that's a gain of five. Well, Clay, you were talking about Adrian and his relationship with Coach Klein. He told me that relationship's been really beneficial for him. Multiple conversations daily on what he's expecting, on what play, on what Adrian sees. A ton of interaction daily that Adrian said really helps his game. And he also pointed out having your OC as your QB coach helps too. They've gotten to know each other so well through five games that feel for now Klein, how he calls a game is translating to the field for Adrian Martinez. No doubt about it. Thanks, Don. Here we go. Third down and four. Martinez all day to throw. He'll flip it toward the back of the end zone, and it'll sail right on through. Nobody was there. Good coverage by the Cyclones, and now it's fourth down. He was trying to be, a, looked like it was going to be a throwback, but the throw wasn't there. And a smart play there by Martinez just to throw that thing out of bounds. Remember, he's had the interception problem in his career, none so far this year. 38 career starts at Nebraska. He threw 30 picks. None in five-plus games here this season. As Chris Tennant, who has missed from 33, will try to give K-State the lead from 30. On the way. And this time he is good. And the Wildcats move back in front 10-9. Well, hold on now. There's a flag on the field. Kevin Boitman, our lead official. The field goal is good. After the play is over, unsportsmanlike conduct. Number 34 on the defense. 15-yard penalty. Correction, correction. <laughs> the penalties are number 34 of the kicking team. That's actually Ben Sinnott. <laughs> ben Sinnott, the tight end for K-State, not Orion Vance. Coach Kleiman doesn't like it, but his team is in front, and he likes that. Number 20, K-State regains the lead. It's been a field goal fest. Four makes tonight. Last one for Chris Tennant from 30 yards out. Puts K-State back in front, a 10-play, 45-yard drive in just over five minutes. But that Ben Sinnott unsportsmanlike conduct penalty means that the Wildcats have to kick off from the 20. Uh, Chris Kleiman not happy with a guy that he shares a lot with. Sinnott and Kleiman went to the same high school. Columbus Catholic in Waterloo, Iowa. Look at this. How about this for field position? Right at midfield, right in the middle of the big eye. I'll help people affected by Hurricane Ian. I want you to donate at redcross.org slash ESPN to help the Red Cross help people recover from that disaster. And it's going to take a long time. 
Get wow. everybody yeah. in Florida and the Southeast back on their feet. Help if you can. So just one field goal here in the second half for Iowa State. They've punted on their two other drives. They've got great field position to start this series. Deion Silas in the backfield with Hunter Deckers. And now he flares out. Empty backfield, Deckers surveying. And was that caught? No, incomplete. It was intended for Jared Russ, the fullback. Second down. It's a big series for this young man, Hunter Deckers. Again, spent a couple of years behind the winningest quarterback in Cyclones history, Brock Purdy. Here's a chance for him to get a big moment in his playing career. That's right, he needs one, right? He's done some good things in his first year as a starter, but he's missing that statement drive here in a big game. His team needs him. We've got Xavier Hutchinson, top of the screen. He's the go-to guy. Here's Silas. Not much. Eli Huggins, the nose guard. Big number 92 with the stop. Just a yard pickup. Third down. Eli Huggins. Love watching him play. Big boy out there. He moves around well. Nimble for a big fella. D-line is the strength of the K-State defense. They rotate eight guys up there, so they're fresh in the fourth quarter. Well, that's where we're at now. Six and a half to play. Deckers to throw, getting heated up. Dumps it on the crossing route to Hutchinson. He lost the football, but they're going to mark him down just shy of the 45-yard line. Boydo on the stop. And so now fourth down. And you knew he was going to Hutchinson there, but again, the routes run well short of the sticks. Keeping the offense out there, Rocky. Yeah, I think they're actually going to now bring out the punt team. He thought long and hard about it. Yeah. I, I, I think he had, he had it been a you know, fourth and two, four, maybe even a fourth and three, but fourth and six, you got to punt this ball away. So Phillip Brooks goes back to return this punt from Perkins. Perkins has had a pretty good night. And this one is going to bounce inside the 10. 37-yard punt for Tyler Perkins. 5.37 to go in Ames. 10-9, Kansas State. Welcome back to Ames, Iowa, Kansas State with a one-point lead over Iowa State. Not good news for this Iowa State defense or Colby Reader. They were examining the outside of his left knee. He tried to high step in place a little while ago, stopped, just shook his head, and he is now clearly done for the game. They've got ice on his knee. His teammates came over, gave him a big hug, but playing Rocky, they've got vets at that starting position. They got young guys behind him, though. Yeah, I, I can't emphasize how big of a loss that is for this defense. Colby Reader, he's had five tackles on the night. He had the fumble recovery. He also did a great job on the Will McDonald sack earlier in the game, getting that throwing window. And yeah, Don, as you mentioned here, that's I mean, in a game where these linebackers have been playing so well, you've got to think A.J. Martinez is going to come up and take advantage of that in the run game. Well, Reader's backup, Karsten Marshall, just made that last tackle on D.J. Giddens. After four-yard gain, it's second down and six. And there's Giddens from Junction City, Kansas, about 20 miles from Manhattan. About a yard shy of the line to gain Freeler on that stop. So third down and short. This is a huge play in this football game right now. I got to think Adrian Martinez takes this into his own hands here. Finds a way to run for this first down. Big moment in this game. He's got 17 carries tonight, 71 yards rushing. It is Martinez, but nowhere to go. TJ Tampa, Anthony Johnson shooting into the backfield to bring him down its fourth down. What a play for this Iowa State defense. It didn't like the play design there. Again, Adrian Martinez is so good when he's running on track, running downhill with a zone read action. His first motion is to the outside, and TJ Tampa just hits it. See, there's nothing going downhill, and that's where he's at his best. Incredible play by Tampa. 
Wolverines and Iowa State. Poised to get it back again. Jalen Knoll standing in his own 40. See if he gets any room to get a return. He muffed one last week. Clean catch here. He'll go to the far side of the field. Finds a block or two. And gets it out close to midfield. He'll be dumped at the 48-yard line. But again, Iowa State gifted great field position. Absolutely. But how about these defenses, partner? I mean, just time and time again, bad field position. Players are out. Just find a way to bow up. Which offense can break through here? Iowa State desperately needs it. It's been weeks. Now we said at the top of the broadcast that this conference, the Big 12, is wide open this year. <laughs> this game really speaks to that, the way this is played out. I mean, anything can still happen in this game. Any one of these two teams can win. Let's see who it comes down to. That pass is tipped and it lands incomplete. Deckers had that one tipped by Austin Moore. Number 41's played well tonight. Great job by Austin Moore getting that throw lane, skying up and knocking it down. Did a real, real good job this offseason, changing his body, losing his little, little bit of weight so he can be nimble out there. And it's paying off, as you can see. Xavier Hutchinson has been targeted 15 times tonight, eight catches for 100 yards. And that's who he was going for there, but that pass incomplete. Echo Boido again on the coverage, and it's third down. Just a little too far out in front. Hutchinson. A little bit of contact, but not, it's nothing Hutchinson can't handle. And look at the timeouts. Both teams with their full complement. Iowa State, you know, even if they don't produce points on this drive, still in a good position to get it back. Yeah, that's why I don't have to force one here. Dumped off short. That's caught by Noel, but he's going to be cut down at the 49 of K-State by Josh Hayes, who has been everywhere in that Wildcat secondary. And so here you go, another fourth down, another long look at the sideline. The wheels are turning here for Matt Campbell. Just mentioned there is still have three timeouts, so you could punt it away. But it looks like Matt Campbell says this is a pivotal part of this game. Got to get a first down, fourth and seven. Tough sledding though. And now we're going to get a timeout, K State. And if Campbell does go for Kansas this. State, calls their first out of the half. After this timeout, maybe he'll change his it mind. Will be but 30 if seconds. he does go for this, that really speaks to the confidence he has in his team's defense, which has been outstanding again here tonight. Absolutely. You know, and I think maybe he just figures, look, this is this is crunch time in this game. We've got to find a way to get a play. If we don't, our defense has done a great job all night. Three timeouts. <laughs> He's taking a good hard look down at that play sheet, saying, what is our best play here? Because we desperately need it. Well, they got out to a good start this year. Won their first three games, including Campbell's first win over in-state rival Iowa, but then the last couple of weeks, things just haven't gone great, especially last week. The mistakes in Lawrence, Kansas, had an opportunity to give the Jayhawks their first defeat. It didn't happen. So trying to end a two-game slide here tonight and get a top 25 win. They're down one, 2.36 to go. They're going to go for it on fourth and seven. If you're at Kansas State, you're finding number eight, Xavier Hutchinson. And now the Cyclones want to use the timeout. Now don't forget to kick off your Sunday with NFL Countdown at 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. We're going to be uh, breaking down Micah Parson and Aaron Donald before they square off. Randy Moss and you got Mossed. And much more right up to game times. 10 a.m. Eastern, presented by Snickers. Alongside Rocky Boyman on Clay Maffick, Don Davenport down on the field. Farmageddon has been excellent. <laughs> the 106th meeting coming down to the wire. Iowa State a huge fourth down here. Xavier Hutchinson coming in motion. Deckers 
has time. On the run, throws, and it oh. is incomplete. It was caught, but out of bounds. Did he juggle it too? It looked like Hutchinson was out of bounds and he juggled it. He did, and he had two feet in bounds. It was a tough throw to the outside, but the feet were in, but he, he dropped this ball. Something oh, yeah. you do not see happen at a number eight comes at a critical part of this game. Oh, my. Wow. Great job by Deckers keeping that play alive. And Matt Campbell just can't believe it. Xavier Hutchinson, his best player. Leading pass catcher coming into the night. Over 100 yards receiving tonight, the biggest play of the game, and he can't come up with the catch. And now Kansas State will try to burn some clock. And Iowa State will have to use a timeout. Wow, you don't expect that from Xavier Hutchinson. Yeah. I mean, he had 111 yards receiving here in Ames against Kansas State a couple of years ago. A pretty good night again here tonight. You got to have your A players coming up with A plays yeah, in crunch right, time. Yeah, big moments of the game. Your, your best players got to make those critical plays, and that's one that you should have made 100%. Matt Campbell just trying to talk to that defense. Still have one more timeout. Burn another one, but... Cannot give up a first down here. Kansas State. See Hutchinson on the sideline. Oh, that's so deflating for an offense that was looking for a big night. They didn't have it. Even if he makes that catch, it hasn't been a great offensive no. night. But trying to find some traction, trying to find some positivity, and then that happens. Right. That's the thing. Yeah, offense hadn't been able to do much all night tonight, but in that critical moment, they had an opportunity. Got the ball, their best player, and couldn't come up with it. And now flag. Chris Klein was all Before the flag was thrown, Kansas State called its second timeout. It will be 30 seconds. So now each team with a timeout remaining. You know, Chris Kleiman, the last time he and the Wildcats came into Ames, they got blown out 45 to nothing. That was in 2020. That was the COVID year. Now, in fairness, Skylar Thompson was uh, unavailable. He wasn't out. at the game. Uh, a ton of players were out. But Kleiman wanted to play that game. He says, if we have enough guys who are eligible to play, who are healthy enough to play, we're going to go in there even if we are a skeleton crew. Well, they got blown out 45 to nothing, so they wanted to come in here tonight and kind of get a little payback. Well, it hasn't been emphatic, but they got an opportunity here up one point to put this game away. Martinez picking his way on the left side, and he's got enough for the first down. That is a big play for Kansas State, a gain of eight, and now Iowa State in the world of hurt. Yeah, that's kind of about do it here with Iowa State still has one timeout left, but 216 picking up the first down. Adrian Martinez puts that ball in his hands. And it hasn't been as explosive tonight, the run game out of Martinez, but he's gotten a, some decent gains here and there. That's a, probably the biggest one of the night. Giddens with a good burst at the middle. And he gets eight on first down. Iowa State has been in this situation so many times. These close games, they've lost six of their last seven one-score games. The exception to that would be Iowa, the victory there earlier this year. And you just got to feel for this defense. This is the second week in a row they have been just lights out. I mean, Kansas last week, they were incredible. And then here tonight, made so many good stops, really shut down this Big 12 leading run game out of K-State, but offense couldn't really help them out. And DJ Giddens gets the first down, and that's going to basically ice it away. 
Chris Kleiman, the Iowa native coming into his home <laughs> state and showing some emotion here in Ames as his team is going to escape this town with a hard-fought <laughs> win. Fired up right there. And, and look, a lot of times these wins, they don't, they, they rarely come easy, right? Rarely, you know, a lot of times you got to do it without an explosive offense. You're not going to have that kind of night, but you're able to get it done. Defense played extraordinarily well. Offense did what needed to do. Adrian Martinez, 246 passing, not rushing, passing, and a touchdown. It was a quiet run game for Martinez and Vaughn, but Chris Kleiman will take it. It's a 10-9 win as they go to 5-1 for the first time since 2014. They are 3-0 in the Big 12 for the second time in three years, and they're going into the bye week feeling pretty good about themselves after this win at Iowa State. Let's go down to Don. Yeah, I'm here with Coach. Coach, obviously a little bit of a defensive battle tonight. You told me heading into the half that your defense had to get off the field. But what can you say about that unit and how they survived this one? They got off the field a bunch. That's a really good team. They got a really good scheme, and our kids just kept getting better as the game went on and started learning some of the schemes that they were doing. Just can't say up. This is a hard place to win here. This is a pretty big win for us. Offensively, not the run game that you guys have been accustomed to in the last two weeks, but I saw no panic from Adrian Martinez. No, and we rushed for 131 yards against Iowa State. Iowa State's got one of the best defenses in college football, and we rushed for 131. But you know what the best thing about it is? We got the win. That's what matters. And there's a lot of guys on this team, 22 guys that actually played in this game two years ago, a 45 to zero loss. So what does it mean to be able to get this one hey, tonight? Uh, last two years ago, whatever, that's a, that's the special group. And uh, I'm excited and, and I'm an Iowa guy to come back here and win. That's pretty big. I got to go. So congrats. <laughs> Chris Klein, I can't wait to get in that locker room. And fist pump again. There you go. You know, that was a, a hard fought win. It didn't come the way that maybe a lot of people expected it to come for K State, but they get it done. And like you said, this is a tough place to come in and win, especially at night. Yeah, and against this defense, who week in, week out is just delivered for Iowa State, but again, just, a, uh, just enough from K State offensively got her done. They're at by next week, they'll head to TCU. On October 22nd, that's going to be a good one, a good showdown between the Horned Frogs, who are still undefeated, and these Kansas State Wildcats. Meanwhile, Iowa State, the first three-game losing streak in the same season since 2016. 10-9, the final. Coming up later here on ESPNU, Jackson State and Alabama State. Stay tuned now for College Football 150, the greatest for our entire crew, including Rocky Boyman and Don Davenport. I'm Clay Mantic. We hope you enjoyed it. 10-9. Wildcats get out of town with a W. So long, everybody.